This is a little quick review of my Ice Bear Champion. Just going to go over a few things that I've done to the bike and uh, you know, modifications and, and so forth. So let's get started. Uh, starting from the front, Michelin Reggae 120-90-10 tires. Grade upgrade uh, over the stock tires. Um, fender. You have to raise your stock fender up to uh, clear the tire. I cut the brackets off that were on there because I used to mount down here. Uh, 60 61 one aluminum uh, quarter inch inside diameter tube cut off on the bandsaw to the right spacer height. These existing brackets that these bolts are in had to use longer bolts, obviously, and I think these are 65 millimeter bolts available at. Lowe's is where I found mine. Put Loctite on them, of course. Fender looked good. I did not have the mud flap on it. Initially went for a ride with tennis shoes on, and when I came back home, my shoes were full of sand. Now, I don't recommend riding with tennis shoes on, but you know, taking a little quick squid ride is sometimes you know fun to do. But uh, anyway, the tire without the mud flap on it was throwing sand straight up and I noticed on the motor the other day that there was just sand all piled up in the top of the cylinder head so uh, I went to put this flap back on and the flap does not fit now that I raise this up if you put the flap on like it was stock it touches the uh, bolt the head bolt and it blocks the uh, airflow so that's no good so what I did and hopefully you can see this is I spaced it. I used some longer bolts and a nut and some quarter inch aircraft washers, just stuff I had in a junk bolt box, and spaced the uh, spaced the mud guard forward. Which the neat thing about this is now when the airflow comes up under the fender, it goes through this gap, and now air comes out blowing across the front of the uh, cylinder head and up under it. So I believe it uh, helps. Uh, it should help with the cooling on the motor and it will definitely help keep the sand when the tire is trying to bring sand up here to keep it from throwing it straight up on the cylinder head and onto me. Moving on to this uh, cheap pit bike exhaust off of uh, Amazon or eBay. I don't remember where I bought it. Uh, very cheap, $40, not very good quality, but a lot bigger uh, pipe diameter from the mouth of it all the way through. Uh, it does flow good. It sounds good as it flow through exhaust. I used a stock heat shield, put a four inch uh, hose clamp on it. I uh, used copper RTV on the back side of it to space it so it's not so it's no metal no metal to metal contact so this doesn't so the exhaust doesn't transfer heat. It's a piece of exhaust bracket uh, material you can buy at the parts store. Just fabricated this with a vise and painted it to, for my muffler mount and I had to do some bending on the exhaust to get it to fit and I didn't really have a good way to bend it so it's kind of you know, creased up a little bit but it works you know when it wears out burns a hole in it or whatever I'll get a probably one of those CT70 exhaust pipes that are similar in price main reason I went with this one is because it had a bigger you know bigger pipe diameter so I thought it might Give me a lot more power so i'm not so sure if it does or does or not um fuel lines one of my fuel lines here had a rub mark on it i guess from rubbing on the frame so i took some 3 8 vinyl tubing and split it in half and then just put it over the fuel lines to serve as a uh, wear protector i guess you could say uh, the fuel petcock i loosened this up and lowered it as low as it would go to help with the grip Help with the gravity feed these bikes you know the fuel tanks pretty low so gravity feed is a little bit weak on them uh, also tied my fuel filter hose loosely to the air intake so this hose won't bump on the frame here and this this keeps the fuel kind of continuing on a downhill path of course the clear fuel filter here you can see your fuel so as the bike's not starting when i first got the bike it wouldn't start I found out because I only put a little bit of gas in it. It wasn't getting primed. Putting the fuel filter in there, you can see if you're getting gas there or not. 
this is not a genuine Makuni carburetor. This is a Chinese knockoff Makuni DM22 from Trail Buddy. Carburetor actually works pretty good, so I'm pretty satisfied with it. Uh, I went with a Uni Pod filter, the foam one, and I used Bell Ray filter oil on it. Then I used this uh, outerwear pre filter, and this is just a real fine mesh that keeps the uh, heavy dirt like you see right here. It keeps all that from just sticking to the filter. I rerouted my breather hose because when you change the air filter out, you no longer have your your crankcase nipple there. So crankcase bent right here. It's the only fitting I had. I just melted this end shut because this is a T. I needed just a straight. But before I just had this hose sitting up here on top of the engine block with a little fuel filter on it, and I kept smelling burning oil, and it was because it was blowing oil on the exhaust and everywhere so that little fitting right now you can see it under there so now i got the hose just coming down here up under the bike right here for the uh, crankcase breather going with the larger tires i uh, i found the stock kickstand was just way too short and i couldn't get my center stand to work with these reggae tires it would just touch them and the tires are pretty close to the swing arm my poor man's uh kickstand extension is a piece of treated 2x4 and I drilled and tapped the uh, foot plate on the kickstand for the quarter inch bolt and put Loctite on it and sprayed a little bit of a uh, black paint on there. So the quarter inch bolt has got a fender washer behind it then you've got the wood block and then it's uh, just threaded and you tap Tap kickstand plate and then the bolt just screws in there and it's got Loctite on it to keep it tight. Okay, so the wood's there to uh, sandwich the bolt so it has something to tighten against the kickstand and keep the bolt from flexing while, while it's tightened down. But that works pretty good, you know, poor man's trick. I don't have a welder access to that. No, wouldn't know how to weld if I did. Stock chain was garbage in my opinion. I'm running that RK chain now, RK gold chain. Running stock gearing, uh, this bike's 32 rear, 16 front. That works well. Running a aftermarket shock, I, I don't remember what it is, but I'm 155 pounds. The stock shocks ride like a hardtail at my weight. There's just basically no suspension movement. They're too stiff for my weight. These shocks actually travel a good bit. You know, you can kind of see where that shock's been touching right there, so it's about an inch or two of travel. Tag bracket, it's a little trick. I like to mount my tags this way because a dirt bike breaks the tag, the tag starts cracking. Rubber mounting the tag in this way, that keeps the tags from cracking. See my tail bag, this is a free bag that came from a workplace, but it works perfect. I just got it strapped on. I've got my registration and a funnel in this compartment. And I carry a fuel bottle. I can actually put two of these in here. It's 25 ounces of fuel, so I could carry up to 50 ounces of fuel. With these tires on the bike, the speedometer actually reads pretty much uh, the right speed. GPS indicated 50 miles per hour is actually 80, which is real close to 50 on the speedometer. The odometer does not count right. It's about 46%. About it counts 46% more miles than actual miles traveled. The bike will run 59 miles an hour down a slight hill, but you know, it gets a bit of vibration and gets feeling you know, a little bit unstable. So if 49, 50 miles an hour is a sweet spot with, you know, as far as vibration and all that goes. And it gets 62.75 miles per gallon is, was an MPG I picked that I got on it when I rode it the other day. And that's that's constantly running 49 and 50, 50 miles an hour. And that's all road miles, not playing off road. It's just riding on the pavement. So that's, that's basically everything I've done to the bike. I uh, hope this video is informative and you enjoy it.